Hey everybody, Steve here in a suburb outside of Washington DC near Bethesda, Maryland. I just checked into my hotel room. I wanted to film inside the cathedral, but it was, I, I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to. It's very quiet, very solemn. It's not anywhere you can be filming and talking. Since I couldn't film inside, I thought I would just film outside in front of the cathedral. And you can see just how beautiful the outside of the cathedral is as well. And it's a beautiful sunny day. But I didn't really anticipate that the park area in front would just be completely full of people. And all around, I mean, everywhere I went, it was just completely full of people. So I really couldn't film and talk about this without having an audience. And, and I don't want to really disturb people who are here to attend service or to pay, pay the respects. So, so, so just to be respectful, I decided just to wait and talk about this once I got into my hotel. So I was able to visit the cremation niche in the columbarium in the basement of the cathedral is the columbarium where I believe I heard one tour guide saying about 200 to 250 people are laid to rest, mostly cremated ashes, but some full body. I was able to find the plaque for Matthew Shepard right here down in the columbarium. The gates are locked to the actual cremation niches. So they're right behind where the plaque is. And it's interesting because he's laid to rest here along with Helen Keller and Annie Sullivan. So there are quite a few famous people laid to rest in this cathedral. And walking in the doors is just breathtaking. It's hard to believe that anything could be this beautiful, this spectacular, and this huge. I've seen pictures before, but until you see it in person, videos and photos just don't do it justice. I mean, it really is just magnificent. It really is all inspiring and such a beautiful place for Matthew Shepard to be laid to rest for his final resting place after being brutally murdered by two completely heartless people. I wouldn't even call them humans. They're just I don't know, what do you call someone who would do something like what they did to him? He met these two at a local bar in Laramie, Wyoming, and they offered to give him a ride back to his dorm room. And unfortunately, he accepted, and they kidnapped him, they robbed him, they brutally beat him nearly to death, and then tied him to a post out in the middle of nowhere on a cold night in Wyoming and left him to die. I mean, who would do that? As I've mentioned on this channel before, and I'm sure many of you will recall, quite often when things like this happen, the killers get a slap on the wrist, but at least in this case, I mean, this was just so, he was so young and just a college student. And I think because he just looked so innocent, he just seemed like a very sweet guy. And it made national and international news and just outraged anyone who had a heart. And because of that, it did stay in the media, and this case wasn't able to fly under the radar, so the killers could just get away with it with a slap on the wrist, as so often happens. Both killers were given double life sentences with no possibility of parole. So you can't ask for more than that. And I, I think in some ways that's better than executing them. I mean, that's the easy way out. I think having to live the rest of your life in prison would be much more difficult knowing that you have no possibility of ever being paroled. So, so in this case, justice was done. I mean, if justice can be done in such a heinous murder such as this. So for many years, his family just held on to his cremated remains. They didn't want the brutality that he suffered while he was alive to happen to his gravesite after he was dead. They feared, from what I've read, that his grave would be vandalized and who knows what you know, people might do to his gravesite because there's still lots of hateful people in the world. You know, unfortunately, as we know, there's no shortage of people who have no hearts who are just full of hate. And just so you know, if you come to visit, yesterday was Sunday, and on their website it says they're not open to sightseers. They do welcome sightseers the rest of the time, but not on Sundays. So during the week, this is a Monday, and during the week they allow sightseers, I believe it was $10, a senior discount. With, with a senior discount, it was $10 for me to enter, which was very reasonable. I'm happy to donate that. They do have docents and tours, and, and they're everywhere. And I happened to overhear one of the tour guides actually pointing out Matthew Shepard's plaque and talking about him a little bit and explaining where he was, where his ashes are actually interred. That's how I knew they were interred in the columbarium behind the, the lock gates. I think the lock gates, I'm sure, are just for family. And again, to ensure that 
you know, people don't do anything to the grave sites. I mean, people can be very, very disrespectful. And I'm sure they don't want to have to deal with just cleaning them when people leave messages or leave lipstick kisses on, on the grave sites or on the, the niche plaques. So I'm sure that's probably the reason. So it's just for family only, as far as I can tell. And in case you're curious, if you, if you travel like I do and you're curious about this particular hotel, it was, I think, $103 with all taxes included for one night. It's a double room. In fact, let me just show you the room a little bit for those of you who are interested. It's, it's nice. I've stayed in these before. And they're usually fairly new. This one seems to be a little bit older and maybe not quite as nice, but it's not close to a freeway or a, or a busy road. So the only noise will be from, from other guests. And... As I've discovered, other guests are very, very noisy almost every single night. It's really difficult to get a good night's sleep, no matter if you're on a busy highway or a quiet little lane, because the guests are usually very loud. And they do allow pets here, so if the guests themselves are not making a lot of noise, then it's their pets making a lot of noise. So at least that was my experience the last time I stayed at uh, a Stay America, and also Every hotel I've stayed in on this particular road trip has been the same, and they all they all allow pets now. At least all the at least all the hotels where I've stayed, they've all allowed pets, which surprises me. But I guess that's what you have to do to compete and stay in business, right? As always, thanks for joining me on this historic road trip to the past and this trip to visit a person who is now a gay icon because of what happened to him because of his murder. Until our next trip to the cemetery together. Thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.